And as preparations continue here on the first coast ahead of Hurricane Irma, JEA is taking steps to be well prepared for the possibility of power outages. Our Hani Rodriguez joins us live with the technology they're going to use during this storm. Hani. That's right, Anthony. This is something that they didn't have during Hurricane Matthew, but they now have in preparation for Hurricane Irma. And we're talking about these, uh, they're saying, a spokesperson with JEA says they're equipped with drones now and people that can actually operate them just to look and be able to look and assess the damage if there is any and then be able to coordinate efforts to restore power faster, which leads me to the next big thing, which also flying off the shelves is generators. And I'm actually right next to our generator here at the news station. This is a commercial size generator, not like the portable ones that most people are buying to power appliances and such uh, in their homes. However, just in case the power goes out, these can be safe to use, but they also can be very dangerous if you do not use them properly. It's a normal engine you crank like a lawnmower. This is a portable generator you can use if your power goes out. And they're pretty easy to use once it's been powered on. And all you do is uh, plug it in, and obviously you run the other end of the cord to what appliance you want to use. But never operate a generator inside of your home or your garage. Randy Wise, president of the Jacksonville Association of Firefighter, explains the dangers. He says the reason is because they have a gas-driven engine that produces carbon monoxide. Oxide can leak into your home, and it's a silent killer. And, uh, you know, if you go to sleep with that generator running, you might not wake up. He says you must keep generators at least 15 feet from your house, preferably under some shelter. You just want to be careful, uh, like a large awning like that. Obviously, it would be okay because there's plenty of ventilation. Even if you have a new generator or a used one, now is the time to make sure it works. You don't want to pull it out the day before the storm and pull it and it doesn't start and realize, oh, what's wrong with it. So let's do a little quick review of the do's and don'ts with generators. So do's, keep it at least 15 feet from your house. Test out your generator before the storm hits and make sure you have gas to power it, enough gas to power it. So now is the time to go buy some. Now some of the don'ts, the biggest don'ts are do not place the generator inside your home or the garage and do not overload it, meaning only power a few appliances or a few lights. Do not try to run your air conditioning because it will not work. And now also do not refuel while you have the generator running. Now, if you're just joining us on First Coast News, we'll have more of this and more information on our website at firstcoastnews.com. For now, reporting live, I'm Honey Rodriguez, First Coast News.